In a study done by the CDC, only 20% of the population gets the daily recommended amount of exercise. Are you part of that 20%? Welcome to the Feel Amazing Naked podcast. I'm Amanda Walker, and I'm here every week bringing you content to get your mind, body, and soul on a path towards feeling amazing naked. So ladies, time to take it off. Hey ladies, and welcome to episode 10 of the Feel Amazing Naked podcast. Today, I'm diving into a struggle that I hear from ladies all the time, and that is they know that they should be working out, getting to the gym, creating a fitness routine at home, but they can't seem to find a way to make that happen. So I'm going to dive into my major tips that I think will help cultivate a fitness routine that lasts and how to shift your mindset so that fitness truly becomes part of your identity. One of the areas that I often hear ladies struggling with the most is creating a fitness routine that lasts. And as we are in the brink of a new year, I know it's something that's on many of your minds. Some of you may be really good at this part already, and it might be the food and the mindset part that you need the greatest shift in or greatest support. But for many people, establishing a fitness routine that actually lasts is something that they long for. And in fact, is a New Year's resolution they keep coming back to because they haven't yet figured out what works for them. So I love getting this question. Actually, I was asked to record this podcast by a group of ladies. You know who you are. And this is going to benefit so many ladies because I'm going to give you some really awesome take-homes and tips. Even if you're already proficient at this part in your life, I guarantee there's some golden nuggets inside this episode for you. So one of the things I want to share is kind of my own journey, and that is that fitness has really been a part of my life. It began as a child, and I think this is very true for some of you. And if you reflect on your adolescent experiences, and if you have a child now, how you can benefit them in this moment while they're young. Health and fitness, and I should say not necessarily the food part, but just Being active has been a part of my entire identity, and I'm going to talk about why that's important later on in the episode. But ever since a child, I was a dancer, then a competitive basketball player. I dabbled in other team sports. I ran track. I became a group fitness instructor just after college. I've coached cycle classes, total body. I have even coached step aerobics. Yes, and I still love it. I would do step aerobics right now if I had the opportunity. Love it. Jane Fonda definitely set my heart on fire in my early childhood days. But point is, is that I have maintained a fitness routine that lasts for a long time. So I would say this is an area I am great at. And there are many reasons why. But as I've shifted into my mid to late 30s, yes, that seems weird to say, there's definitely been an evolution in my fitness world. And what might have been very competitive, really steadfast, hard goals early on has merged into a space of just long-term health and finding things that are really light my soul on fire to participate in. So I really encourage you to assess where you're at when you're establishing your fitness routine. So right now, one of the things that I'm going to tell you is key to success, and that's I'm doing what I love. And so that's a couple times a week I'm crossfitting because it's definitely a passion and a love I have. A few times a week, two to three times a week, I am lifting weights, consistently lifting weights for lots of reasons. One of the days I'm also doing something at home typically just to fit it in my schedule, an at-home workout, which I actually have a guide for that you can access in my show notes and I'll talk about later on, or I'm doing yoga or something like that. So I'm active five times a week for an hour. That's it. Five hours a week maybe six if I stay and do some stretching is really the time I give to myself. So that is not a lot of time. So I know you can do that as well. It is not a one size fits all approach. There are so many different opportunities for fitness out there. Group fitness classes, one-on-one work with a trainer, at-home workouts. There is so much out there. And here's the reality. Research supports that you can make progress doing so many different things. You know, when it comes to lifting weights, you can make progress doing small reps, high weight, but you can also make progress doing lots of reps, high volume and lightweight. So it's figuring out like, what do you like best? What are you trying to accomplish? 
And so I'm going to let the experts do what the experts are best at, and that is the research. And there are so many awesome experts that I love to follow, and I'm going to share their names. So if you want to follow them too, I encourage it. So Alan Argon, he is one of my favorites. He just puts these awesome graphics together that just make so much sense. Brett Contreras, he's a booty expert, lifting expert for ladies. Dr. Andy Galpin, Sohi Lee, those are just four of my favorites. And I'm going to link to their Instagram pages because I think they're worth absolutely following and learning some of the research component. However, I am not an expert in that research space. What I am an expert in is helping looking at each individual woman and figuring it out what is the underlying causes that are holding them back from success. So what is it that you're not doing that is stopping you from actually creating a routine that's going to stick? So I'm going to start with just five tips that I think that you could start implementing right away that are going to help you start to create that. And then I'm going to dive into more of the actual habit formation component. That is really going to be key. So tip number one, I already mentioned it before. You need to do something you love. Here's why, you know, I coach CrossFit and oftentimes the first experience at a CrossFit gym, you know, somebody will come to me and say, you know, well, my friend so-and-so loves CrossFit. So she's had such great results. I wanted to come too. And they go through a workout and they despise it and they keep trying to come back, hoping that they will love it. And maybe they will. But oftentimes we are choosing some sort of fitness because our friend or our family member has had such great success with it. So we keep forcing ourselves to show up for it. And every single time you go, it sucks. And so guess what? When you show up and wake up each morning and try to push yourself to go somewhere that sucks, then it's going to be really hard to continue establishing that as a habit. You know, think about like work. If you show up and you're trying to force yourself to go to a place of employment that sucks the life out of you, then you're probably going to start looking for a new job. So I really encourage you to do something you love and mix it up. So you might have to try lots of things before you find that like Zumba is your long last fitness companion. Or, you know, maybe you're afraid to get into the gym to lift weights and it takes hiring a trainer or working with a friend who has the knowledge and expertise in the gym to show you that you actually love it. So you need to do something that you love because when you love something, you keep coming back for it. And I believe that's a key to long-term success. And that doesn't mean just one thing. Like I said before, I love lots of things. And so I create a routine in my week that exposes me and allows me to do those things that I love because they light me up. And you want to continue embedding happy into your life and things that light you up so that it sticks and it lasts for years to come. So tip number two is I believe that you need to in this space of creating a fitness routine that lasts, be lifting heavy weights. This is a place where women are fearful. A lot of the reason why women aren't lifting heavy weights or lifting weights in general is because they lack the knowledge. And that's okay, but don't be afraid to go in and fail. There is an online plethora. There are so many easy, inexpensive workout guides that you can buy that are just related to fitness. And I'm gonna link to a couple here that I personally have loved because you can buy them and you can hop into the gym. You don't need to rely on anybody else other than watching some YouTube videos and really trying to work on perfecting technique and just getting in there and trying through experiment and error. So lifting heavy weights will not make you bulky. It takes so much work and eating a lot of food for you to look like, you know, those CrossFit athletes you see that are just shredded and huge. Now, there's some genetic components. There's some people that are just going to gain muscle at a more rapid rate than others. But trust me, it takes a lot of work. The research supports so many benefits to bone health as ladies, muscle health, brain health, overall metabolic health for you to lift weights. So if you're trying to create a fitness routine that lasts, I would love for you to expose yourself to lifting weights. We have this mindset that we have to hustle, grind, and cardio, cardio, cardio to see progress. But the reality is many women want to feel stronger. Many women want to build more muscle. This notion of toning is really inaccurate. The way you build muscle is by doing things that put resistance to your bones and your muscle, and that is lifting weights. So if somebody's going out to run a marathon, they're not going to go cross-country skiing, right? They're going to go out and run. 
So if you want to build muscle and you want to get strong and you want to be able to do some of those functional things like squatting or picking your grandchildren up or picking your children up or, you know, backpacking with your children, then you need to do things that build muscle and focus on those functional movements that really pay dividends to your long-term health. So tip number three to creating a fitness routine that lasts is learn to listen to your body. So what I often see is something I've talked about before, which is a focus on short-term intensity instead of long-term consistency. And so right now, as we're at the brink of the new year, there's so much media out there about like, do this 30-day challenge, do these 30 at-home workouts. I hear some gyms doing like a 30-day challenge where you have to come in for 30 days in a row. Holy hell, that's good. You're going to get burnt out. I could not make it to the gym for 30 days in a row. My body would hate me. My mind would hate me. And what it isn't going to breed is long-term consistency. That's not real life. And so you need to learn to listen to your body and accept that oftentimes less is actually more. We have in our brains a mindset and an attachment that we have to do, do, do to see progress. But the reality is if food is in point, which this is 80% of it, if you're looking to lose weight and create body composition changes, if you're focusing on just your gym routine, then you are spending too much energy in the wrong place. More energy should be spent on food, in my opinion, and in my experience in working with clients. But you have to learn to listen to your body. If you wake up and your body is screaming it needs a rest, then let it. There are so many things happening that you can't see that create recovery and that create really growth that we need to learn to listen to our bodies. When we're working out and when we're lifting weights, I mean, the reality is we're creating damage so that when the muscles rebuild, They're stronger and larger. So we have to give them time to repair and recover. And we also need to create the space in our mind that allows us to settle and relax and realize that if we're constantly trying to go, 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 we're not going to reap the benefits of recovery. So tip number four is actually kind of what I began to hit on prior is don't use fitness to outtrain your poor diet. I cannot tell you how many clients I have worked with or how many people I see at the gym. They have a consistent routine of fitness. Maybe this is you already. You're like, man, I don't need this because I'm already great at this part. But they are not seeing any progress in weight loss or any progress in getting stronger. And that's because they use fitness as a consequence to poor eating choices So maybe this sounds familiar. You maybe had a really bad weekend and you ate all the things that you know you shouldn't and overindulge. And so Monday you tell yourself, you know, I'm going to work out twice. That's going to help. Right. But the reality is that pattern of going back and forth between that punish and reward cycle between fitness and overeating never is really worked on. And so all you're constantly doing is overeating and overtraining. And so you're staying at level, you're staying at a plateau. And until you realize that they go hand in hand and that the greatest place you could invest time is actually in the kitchen and in improving your mindset and your relationship with food on the day to day, then you're honestly going to be using fitness to outtrain diet for a long period of time. I wrote a piece about this for Catalyst Athletics. I'll link to it in the show notes as well because I think it's an extremely big component of kind of the cultural expectation we have out there is as soon as you overeat, you must then serve a consequence by moving your body. And that's really not what it's meant to be. Moving your body should be a mindset of long-term health, should be a positive relationship you share with yourself and not one of negative outcome because of food choices. And moving on, tip number five is If you want to create a long-term fitness routine that lasts, then you must set goals, but above all, you must create systems to make sure it happens and it becomes part of your identity. This is the biggest tip that I can leave you. So a great example is I have people ask, like, how do you, like, you never waver. You don't, you know, you're always active even when you travel. And the reality is, is that's because it's become a part of who I am. I know that I am a better person. I can show up bigger in the world. I feel better in my skin. I feel stronger, more confident in who I am when my health is a priority and when 
my training is sprinkled into the week very naturally. And the more you do this and the more you figure out what your system has to look like for this to happen, you create the behaviors for this to become part of your identity. So practice, 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 practice. So if you think of goals, goals are outcome focused, right? I want to lose X amount of weight. I want to get to the gym. I want to squat this much. Those are outcome focused. But if you don't create a system and an action plan for those outcomes to even become a potential, then the habit's not going to be existent. And so when you then create some sort of systems and some sort of behaviors, that habit can become part of your identity and you don't have to rely on outside cues and triggers and maybe additional accountability for that to happen. So in my group, this is what I'm constantly doing. If somebody's doing a poor job at meal planning, oh, they tell me like, I want to meal prep. I'm going to meal prep on Sundays. You know, every Sunday I'm going to meal prep. This is what I see a lot of people doing. But yet they don't have the system built in for that to actually be executed. So they haven't basically reverse engineered their week to know what meals they're going to be making, nor have they grocery shopped in accordance with those meals, nor do they have cues in place each morning to be able to defrost those proteins associated with those meals. So do you see that's the system? If you want a goal at the end, you must develop systems for that to happen. Right? A real life example is my children. I was exhausted by what their rooms looked like. And I realized like my goal and their goal was to clean their rooms and have a clean room and maintain a clean room. But I, as a mom, hadn't helped them create a system so that they could have success. So what did we do? We gutted their closets. We put in new organization. We discussed, you know, what action steps needed to happen for them to put their laundry in a certain place, dirty clothes in a certain place. And we created a system so that the goal of keeping their room clean was easy to adhere to, right? It was easy to be achieved. I'm telling you, they're so freaking excited about it. And so this is how I look at clients. And when we're creating fitness routines at last, what system do you have in place to help you execute the goal that you're trying to achieve? So one way I think you do this is by really assessing your environment and not just your physical environment, but actually like how you maneuver your day, what your routine, your routine is part of your environment. So let me share a story with you about a client. She desperately was after this goal to create a fitness routine that lasts. So I said, okay, let's walk through your morning. Tell me about your morning. So she got up, she got her regular clothes on. She would drive her daughter to school. She would come home. Then she would be back at home. She would then dress into her workout clothes and drive back to the gym. She works from home. She has a career. She's a working mother. And I said, wait, 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 go back. So you get up and put on your regular clothes only to drive somewhere, come home, get dressed in workout clothes and then go back to the gym. And I said, er, we're going to change two things. We are creating an environment for success and what you do in the morning sets the tone. So here is a huge tip, ladies. If you have the flexibility to do so, the first thing you change into should be your workout clothes. That sets intention. That says, I am moving my body. And if you work away from home, then use this time to pack your workout bag. So the last thing you need to do is go to work come home, have to get dressed and go back out. Right now, we've already created a less successful environment. So if we make sure that part of getting ready is getting yourself to the gym. So pack your clothes or put them on first thing in the morning. Then when you leave the house to go drop your kids off or do your morning routine, you're already out. So I said to her, you're dropping your daughter off to only come home. Why? You've not only wasted 30 minutes of efficiency time, but you're also getting home and tempted to possibly dive into work, clean the house, do laundry. So I said, here's your goal for the week. I only want want you to change these two things. I want you to, when you wake up, put on workout clothes. And as soon as you drop your daughter off, go immediately to the gym. Quite honestly, it changed her life. She said, I feel silly having not figured this out. I said, that's okay. You're asking me to help you to give you guidance so we can create these systems for success. And that little tweak was really the answer to her beginning to create this fitness routine. We eliminated some of the barriers to her success and we created a greater environment for success. Along that note, when you're trying to allow fitness and create fitness as part of your identity, then one of the things I believe is schedule it into your calendar. It has to be there. 
I work with a client for many years now and I ask him, I want you to show me on your calendar this week, when are the four times that you're actually going to get to the gym and what are you going to do? And as part of his accountability to me, he shows me that in his calendar. You can do that for yourself. You can schedule it into your planner, into your Google calendar, because when it's there, it comes up on your calendar. That's a reminder of how important fitness should be in your life. And it's the cue, right? When we're creating habits and behaviors, we need a cue sometimes. We need an extrinsic cue that reminds us to execute a behavior going to the gym so that we can reap the rewards of feeling strong and that behavior continually is reaffirmed. I also recommend you do it early rather than later because let's be real with each other. I'm guilty of this time too. If if I schedule my fitness in for one or two o'clock, I am sometimes going to be less likely to execute because life gets in the way or calls come up. So I really encourage you use the morning time when you're trying to create a fitness routine that lasts as part of creating an environment for success. And in the beginning, as I said before, to create a behavior that is new and a habit that's new, you might need some additional accountability. And there is ways to do this. You might hire a trainer. You might buy a program. And I'll link to the show notes because I have a super inexpensive workout guide that I created, 30 at-home workouts. So if you're just new or you're even somebody like me, right? I work from home and there are days where I am just squeezing in 20 minutes. I can't get to the gym. This is a library of 30 workouts. They're not intended to do 30 in a row, right? We're talking about long-term consistency, but just this library of workouts that you can reference with video guides included. And I've also throwing in something that is another system that people need to work on is my system for meal prepping, four steps to what I think bring really long-term meal prep success. But this is another way for accountability or grab a workout buddy or a coach, If you are in the beginning stages and you need a little bit of extra nudge and support, then it's okay to say, I need a little help right now. And they will help you create that system in place so that you can create long-term success. And lastly, really the biggest component of allowing fitness to become part of your identity is what's going on inside your brain. So it's working on the mindset And a lot of times we have this fear, we have this embarrassment because we don't have as much knowledge or we're worried about what our body looks like moving as we're a beginner. This was something that came up with a client recently. She said, you know, my resistance is that I think I'm not doing the movements right and I feel silly. And the reality is do it where nobody's watching. Do it so that you can start to learn how your body feels and overcome the mindset that my body doesn't move the way I think it used to or it should Or for this great example in my fan group, they want to run, but they leave the story that they're not runners. And so it's shifting your mindset to saying, I'm not a runner, to saying, I am a runner, or I am an athlete, or I am a fit mom. And that simple mindset shift of really owning who you are is completely powerful to allow fitness to become part of your identity. And at the end of the day, though, I think the biggest thing to understand is that done is better than perfect. And I say this over and over. Some days it's 20 minutes inside your house and other times it's a perfect yoga class. But what is really the difference between allowing fitness to dwindle and not be at the top of your priority list or allow it to become part of your identity is making constant effort and creating systems and habits that truly will allow it to become a part of who you are. So I am cheering for you, and I hope that these tips really help you create a powerful fitness routine that lasts. This week's fan tip is all about meal prep. It's one of the skills I know so many seek to master and create as part of their weekly routine. But one thing I want to talk about is how to make it simple so it doesn't seem so daunting and overwhelming because I know that's the analysis paralysis that so many people share. It's like, I don't even know where to get started, so I don't. So I offer a meal prep guide and one of the things on it, so it's four easy steps to really simplify your meal prep. But one of the steps I talk about is how to make the actual planning part easier. And that's by creating what I call the pick three combo. So just as it really implies You pick three things, a handful of protein, a handful of real food carbohydrate, and a handful of vegetables for every single meal. 
then I really encourage you, if you're going to prepare protein at the start of a week, that's the simplest thing to prepare early because it takes the most time, then make it without any seasonings so that you can repurpose it throughout the week. So if you're going to make chicken, for example, you make it without any seasonings or just generic seasonings like salt, pepper, and garlic so that you can repurpose it into maybe buffalo chicken or barbecue chicken or chicken lettuce wraps. And then you can simply swap out the real food carbohydrate and the vegetables and you really create a huge diversity of meals by making a few simple things. So start small, keep it simple. Don't overwhelm yourself by looking up crazy Pinterest recipes that take hours to prep. Instead, just keep it simple with the pick three and I promise it will make things easier and you'll be able to master meal prep. Right now, my meal prep guide, I'm pairing it with my new workouts that are available in the show notes. You can find them at feelamazingnaked.com backslash 30 easy at home workouts. And you get both right now for literally less than a Chipotle burrito. So you can't beat it. If you love this episode, I would love for you to subscribe to the podcast on whatever favorite podcasting app you have. That way you will be sure to get the newest episodes delivered to you for free as soon as they come out. And ladies, the next session of the Feel Amazing Naked program kicks off January 14th of 2019. Yes, we're already talking about the new year. I want you to find success, lasting success this year. So if you've been struggling with a life of jumping from one diet approach to the next, and you know what to do on paper, but just can't seem to get it to click, it's likely because you haven't really gotten after the root causes of the behavior changes you're trying to make. And in the Feel Amazing Naked program, not only do we do that, but we also do a lot of the self-growth work that is necessary for you to truly feel confident in your skin. So you can visit feelamazingnaked.com, click on get started to fill out the application to make sure you are a perfect fit for the program because I would so love for you to change your life this coming year.